Three electric cars. The total amount of energy that can be delivered from this system is around 44 kilowatts. The total energy installed on the roof from solar module is around 45 kilowatts from Trina module. And of course, the same system is able to storage around 52 kilowatts hour in a Volkswagen DIA battery pack. So let's talk about it. Welcome back to CS Tech Audio here and this is my garage and of course this is my home setup that is able to deliver you up to 44 kilowatts of energy in an off-grid mode or hybrid mode and of course the same system it's able to storage around 52 kilowatts hour of energy that can be using during the night. The same system it's able to work with grid or without grid at the full power and let me show you how this system is composed. First of all, because it's a huge system, you need a huge distribution system for AC and DC and this is the reason that I decided to use this Prisma uh, set from Schneider Electric. Basically, it's a huge cabinet around 2 meters tall and this gives me the possibility to put DC on the bottom and of course AC protection on the top and in the middle this beautiful LCD from Victron. Before we talk about protection, let me show you how all the cables come from the roof on this metal gutter. And as you can see over here, I have positive, I have negative. And please keep in mind, each cable is one separate string. And let's move to strings and let's talk about it. As you can see over here, I have separate string for east, west and south because my house has three orientation. I decided to install solar module on each of them. And of course, I have around 44 kilowatts of solar module from Trina Solar. So I decided to use for East Fronius, Fronius, of course on the West I decided to put some Fronius. I have two strings connected in parallel inside the inverter. So basically the Fronius has around 24 kilowatts of solar module from Trina installed. Regarding the SPD protection, the reason that you cannot see the SPD protection over here is that because the Fronius has already a space inside the inverter where you can put the SPD protection. Now let's move to Victron because I have a Victron MPPT and as you can see over here I decide to use the latest MPPT from Victron. Basically it's an MPPT RS 450. 450 uh, stands for 450 volts maximum string uh, voltage that can be input into this unit and of course the 200 means the 200 amps that can be delivered to the inverter and of course to the battery. So basically this device is as you can see over here a four string MPPT basically has four MPPT controller inside each one can work individually so you can put a separate string for each one so you can put a string on east or string on west or string on south and each string can have different voltages so different brands of solar module installed so this is the most beautiful product from Victron in my opinion because give me the possibility to extend more now as you can see over here I decide to put three strings on the east side and of course another string on the west side. I have over here six modules from Trina, six modules from Trina, six modules from Trina and on the west I have eight modules from Trina. The SPD protection is outside because Victron don't have the space inside to put the SPD so you put in your cabinet. Now let's move to the bottom. Here I have two MPPTs. They are also connected on the same system but they are separate over here. As you can see I have SPD. I have a distribution block because all the three strings are put it in parallel over here and through these metal gutters all the cables is going to this MPPT. Basically these are smallest MPPT from Victron. They act separately. They have only one tracker so it's a must to put the panels in the same orientation. In my case I put the same panels connected in parallel but they are connected to south. As you can see over here, these one are 250 by 100, the same thing, 250 stand for 250 volts maximum uh, system array and 100 means the 100 amps that can be delivered to this cable to battery. Regarding the cables, as you can see over here, I decide to put very thick cable. I have 50 millimeters cable for PV because I have three strings connected in parallel. Of course, it's oversized, but I want to be more beautiful and I like how they look over here. And for battery, I have 50 millimeters, it is mandatory, so this is not just for uh, appearance, it's uh, defined correctly in order to not become very hot when they deliver energy to the batteries. So, each, each MPPT deliver energy to this cable, to this metal gutter, and regarding the 450 MPPT, as you can see, I put two cable uh, 
mm, around 50 millimeter each one so all the cables go to these metal gutters and of course go into a distribution system also from Victron. I decided to use this distribution uh, system from Victron for two reasons. First of all, it looks amazing. Look how they clean look on the wall. And the second thing, it's about their functionality because they are very powerful. And let me explain you why. First of all, as you can see, they are separately. This is one unit, two unit, three unit. Basically, you can put four unit of this in series, maximum for one array. So they can handle around 1000 amps. And of course they have the possibility to put the protection fuses inside. Let me remove the cover and show you a real one. As you can see over here, we have two bus bars. We have the positive, we have the negative, and of course we have the fuses. As you can see over here, I have two positive that are going directly to inverter. I decide to use two separate cables for one reason, the heat. Because if I decide to put one cable over here, a thick one, for example, you can choose a 95 millimeter, square millimeters cable, you will put to only one in one fuse, you will have a bigger fuse. And of course you have a very, very heat area over here because everything is drained from only one place. So I decide to put two separate cables. The cables are the same size and I have two separate areas. And this way the heat is not uh, basically in one point, it's dissipated on two points. Anyway, in order to be sure that the temperature is correctly, I decide to put a temperature sensor over here. As you can see, it's a wire sensor. And of course it's connected to my JX unit and all the information will be broadcasted to my uh, phone or uh, to my mobile app. Now, let's talk about Lynx distribution system. As you can see over here, they have an electronic board into the back. And the reason is that one fuse will blow away for different reasons. You receive a red notification light over here. So in this way, you'll be able to see that one fuse is voice blow away. So this is the reason that I like the Victron distribution system. Now let's move to battery measurement. The battery measurement for my system was also from, it's also from uh, Lynx. As you can see over here, I have the Lynx Shunt also stands for 1000 amps. And for those who don't know what a Shunt is in reality, basically, basically keep in mind the Shunt is basically a counter that is able to measure the amount of the energy that is coming from MPPTs and is going to battery side. So he will measure how much energy is going into the battery. And of course, during the night can also measure the energy that is going from the batteries. And of course, it's used by your inverters. So it's a counter that measures the exact amount of the energy and show you the real state of charge of your battery. The same should communicate via CAN bus. And of course, all the cables are connected to your uh, JX unit. In my case, I decide to use Ecrano because it's the newest unit. And of course, it was very nice to place it into this Schneider cabinet. Well, sorry, it's very hot over here because my system is running and even it's in the garage, it's still hot over here because there are three units that make heat and of course also the MPPT delivery heat. Now, let's talk about cables. As you can see, I have a cable management put in this metal gutter. I like to put all the cable to be fixed on the bottom of this gutter because first of all, they look pretty nice. And in the end, if the cable can become hot, they will be cooled down by this metal gutter. In order to maintain the temperature correctly, I have a sensor over here. This is a Wi-Fi sensor. This sensor is made by Ruby. They send us, they communicate via Bluetooth with your uh, Victron JX unit. So in this way, you, you will have temperature measurement from different points from your system. Now, let's talk about the biggest unit over here. Inverters. As you can see over here, I have three inverters from Victron. Basically, I decide to add three of them because each one is for one individual phase. So they are connected in the three phase system and each inverter has around 10,000 VA. In reality, uh, 10,000 VA mean eight kilowatts of energy. Basically, I have 8,000 watts for each inverter. So in the total, these inverters can deliver me in an off-grid mode or a hybrid mode around 24 kilowatts 
of energy. Basically, I can charge my car, even the grid is down. Now, and I have three of them connected in, uh, in the three-phase system. And of course, I have a Fronius. Basically, I decided to add a Fronius because the Fronius can handle my, the entire consumption during the day and even can handle the electric car charging because the conventional from the Fronius is more convenient because the strings on Fronius is around 800 volts. So it will be more easy for my system to receive energy directly from Fronius during the day and of course from Victron during the night. But in case the, the Fronius don't deliver too much energy, the Victron can receive energy from the battery, from the sun, can mix the sources and of course can handle the load together with Fronius. So this is the real reason that I decided to add Victron with Fronius. So in this moment, even I have a very huge amount of solar module installed in my home, as you can see, it's a rainy day outside because it's not normally for me to turn on my system during a rainy day. I don't have too much production. So this is the Fronius. Fronius is configured to be in a microgrid system. For those who don't know what microgrid mean, let me make a small video. First of all, please keep in mind microgrid system. It's a system that connect Fronius with Victron. Let's take it another way. Fronius, Huawei and other on-grid inverters, they are made to be work only when the grid is available. For example, if I have, if I don't have the grid to my Fronius, even it's sunny outside, even I have solar production, the inverter will stay off because they are connected to the grid and they depend of the grid. So no grid, no power, even you have solar panels. In this case, when you have a microgrid connection, the Fronius is connected with Victron. Basically, the Fronius is connected to the Victron output and Victron generates the grid and the Fronius will know that have a grid and of course will be running at a fully power. So in this way, in this setup, I can disconnect from the grid and I still have 44 kilowatts of energy from Fronius and from Victron. So this is microgrid. So this is the reason I decide to add Fronius to my system in order to have more power during the day. Now, let's talk about protection because as you can see, I have the cabinet from Schneider. I decide to install all the protection from EIT. It's a company that uh, we're working with them since uh, 2006 or seven. I don't remember exactly, but they are very efficient. So also I decide to install in my home the same uh, products from them. For example, I have over here a uh, Victron in, Victron out. I have a switch that has three positions, solar and uh, grid. So the reason I install this switch is when it's connected to the solar, as you can see over here, the entire consumption of the house is going through Victron, but for different reasons. Uh, for example, Victron, Victron will need an update, Victron will need an upgrade, or Victron is defective or something happening. I just move my switch to grid, and in this case, the entire system will make a bypass and my entire home is connected directly to the grid until I finish to update or upgrade my system. Now, about protection, I have protection from Fronius and another beautiful thing I have over here, it's a switch that has three positions. As you can see, Fronius AC in, Fronius AC out. Basically, this is this means Fronius is a microgrid and if I move this switch to AC in, basically my Fronius will be connected directly to the grid and in this way, if I don't have any grid, the Fronius will stay off. So this is the reason I install a microgrid and the reason that I install that switch is to move for different uh, tests or I don't know if I decide to move Fronius to, to grid will be just a click. Now regarding the, the distribution system, for example, this is my heat pump. Also, I have the heat pump. I have a smart meter to measure the exact amount of the energy that is drained by the heat pump. And also I have the same switch uh, when the heat pump is connected over here. All the energy for the heat pump will be delivered from my solar system and even for my, from my battery. But for different reason, I decide to move the pump directly to the grid. In this way, my heat pump will be receive energy from the sun when the sun is available, but during the day will receive energy only from the grid, not, for my, not from my battery. This is a very good uh, setup for those who has a small battery. So you don't want to drain your battery during the night. So you just move your heat pump to the grid. And like I told you, during the day, you will have energy from the sun. And of course, in the night, you have energy from the grid.
And the last, the last thing that I install in my setup, it's an Ecrano JX. As you can see over here is the latest JX unit from Victron. Basically, this is the brain for your uh, whole system from Victron. As you can see over here, I have the Fronius, I have the Victron. And of course, if I go to the menus, as you can see over here, I have my charging station. I have everything connected on the same unit and everything can be managed from your I don't know, from your app, from your web app, and also from your different software, for example, from Nordet, if you are a geek and you want to make your system to be controlled externally, you can control your entire system from Victron through this unit from external sources. So this was my setup from my garage. So what do you think about this setup? It's worth it. We cannot talk about money because I'm pretty sure that my wife will look to this video and she will know how money I spend of this system, but it's not a cheap system, but it's an efficient system for my setup in order to charge my car during the day and of course charge my car during the grid outage. And of course, if I decide, I can drain uh, my battery and charge my car battery. Regarding the batteries, I have a DII battery from Volkswagen. Basically, I will not make a video over here. This is a DII solution. It's not the most safety solution on the market. I will replace it very soon with a Victron uh, lithium iron phosphate. This is the reason that these ports over here are empty because my Victron battery will be connected over there. Now, in the end, write me what do you think about this system? And of course, if you have any question, we'll be available anytime into the comment area below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channels if you want to see more video like this and hit the bell if you want to receive a notification. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.